sometimes I don't have the words to, to tell somebody how much I care about them or how I feel. And to me, music has always been a way to, to, to express these emotions that sometimes are just hard to say with words. Natalia. The first time I met Natalia, I was about five when I first traveled to Colombia. She, along with the rest of the family, is from Colombia, from South America. Um, I'm from Miami, Florida, so I was first generation born here in the United States. I was so proud coming in as like the American cousin, and I brought this blue football, American football. And as soon as I met my wonderful cousin for the first time, Natalia, she decided that that football was hers now basically just grabbed it and never let it go. And she kept it. <laughs> Through that moment, I got to meet a very determined, strong-willed little cousin of mine. And uh, she totally like just turned into a strong-willed and determined woman. She started living with my mother in Long Island for a few years to get her biology degree at Stony Brook. And I would go and visit in the summers and see her really just so passionate about medicine and about helping people and just the work ethic was so strong. So I would always go back to school and be like, I gotta work harder. I gotta work like Natalia works, you know, it was that kind of vibe. She moved back to Colombia, South America, got her med degree there, came back to New York City to get her license here in the U.S. for practicing as a doctor. And this is when the pandemic hit. We stopped working here in the Oregon Symphony March 12th when Governor Brown put a ban on uh, gatherings of a thousand or more. And so that was us in the orchestra. Suddenly we were not playing concerts. It was very surreal and strange. Couldn't wrap my head around it really. Until I got a phone call from New York, I got news about Natalia. She was helping and treating patients. And you know we knew she was out there in the front lines from day one. I was told that Natalia had gotten the virus she was put on a ventilator and um, she spent about five and a half weeks on that ventilator. Um, so it hit home. It became real at that point. We as musicians, as artists, the thing we do is provide the space for people to come and experience joy, emotions, you know, healing. I was texting with my buddy John, who's the timpanist in the orchestra. We just performed this piece by Andy Akiho called Karakura Nai, which is Japanese for crimson. And in my mind, I'm thinking Red Cross, healthcare workers, um, the team that's helping Natalia recover. This could work too for, for the piece. I thought it would be a great way to dedicate, you know, dedicate this moment to her.
I was meditating on love. Now, while we're all locked down, um, you know, we can't touch each other. And one of my best friends, she's like my little sister, she's a nurse and she comes home and sleeps in their guest cottage. She can't touch her kids. For months, she can't touch her children and she can't hug, she can't hug me. And, but she's there every day. This song is, is about love asking all of us uh, what it needs. What does love want? And love asks us all to stand together. I want to dedicate this to my little sister, Steph. Stand up for me And we'll stand together I'm the sky above you Oh, I love you Stand up for me For your great-grandmother For your father, brother And each other And everyone Be the light Be the answer Be Stand up for me And I'll stand beside you I'm the light that guides you From inside you And everyone Um, gosh, how do I do that? How do I do this? Sorry, I'm like freaking out. So what do I do? I'm like, I think of, of Chris Farley's interviews. He's just like super awkward and nervous. Breathing heavy the whole time and stuff. And he's like, so, you know, when you did that, that was <laughs> So for everybody out there in quarantine land who's stuck at home, becoming reacquainted with your cooking skills or lack thereof, we thought it would be fun to reach out to some of our favorite composers and talk a little bit about cooking and composing. So hi, I'm here with Kenji Bunch, violist extraordinaire and composer, um, Portland native, and we are going to make crepes. Crepes? We are. Crepes. You're very much into this idea of cooking and composition. Yeah, that's my thing. The kitchen is my favorite room in the house. And if I'm not composing or sleeping or doing stuff with the kids, I'm in here. Or watching TV. But what, do you, what do you watch on TV? Do you watch cooking shows on TV? 
I, I, I love uh, diners, drive-ins, and dives. Uh, I learned a lot from that show because right? yeah. he just goes into these kitchens and has people make their signature dish. You just learn a lot about uh, the balance of ingredients. And yeah. I mean, I assume that some of the same sort of tired old debates about highbrow, lowbrow that happen in composition, music happen in the cooking world. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, my own uh, trajectory, I guess, as a, a composer and also as someone who likes to cook and eat food, uh, follows a similar pattern. There was a time when I thought I had to write music that conveyed a certain intelligence or, or sophistication. And there was also the time when I used to find it interesting and exciting to go to the fanciest uh, cuisine uh, restaurants in New York. These days, I, I want things that are authentic, mm -hmm. soulful. Mm -hmm. In my own cooking, I, I try to make stuff that, that people will like and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that reflects some kind of authenticity. And I guess my music has kind of uh, veered that way too. Should we attempt to do some crepes? Yeah. Uh, all you need is a cup of flour. Wait, am I supposed to put this in the mixing bowl? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna need like a tablespoon of melted butter, and then you're gonna beat two eggs. Like in, in what sort of a thing? In its own bowl. Dude, I have a hard time like cracking eggs well. Eggs are uh, surprisingly tricky. One and a fourth cup of milk. Generally, the first crepe is crap. <laughs> nice. I mean, I feel like there's like a metaphor for life with like perfections in there. It's just... Yeah, I'm always reminded and I always tell my students this anecdote I heard about the late poet William Stafford, who would tell his students, his writing students, about writer's block, that you have to lower your standards. <laughs> It, it, how can you expect your best work to come out if you're not even allowing the worst of it to come out? Yeah. I think that's so important when we're trying to do something creative. We, we just have to let whatever come out. And yeah, it's, it's probably not going to be that good. Basically, everything I cook, I use a, a fish spatula. I, I find I get the most control with this. Did you say fish? Fish, yeah. It's, it's called a fish spatula. What about this spatula? You think you think this this giant weird red one will work? Oh yeah, that's awesome. How's your crepe looking? I feel like I like overcooked the first side, and I'm also worried about my batter. No, that's okay. I, I think that's just the the first one. So I can probably move on to the next one at this point. You think? Yeah. My concept of uh, live performances has changed. And I, I guess maybe I've evolved as a performer in that way too. I'm most interested in something different and unique happening with every live performance, even if it's a performance of the same music. You know, it's a funny sort of bittersweet thing to think about now as we're uh, denied that experience. Yeah. How special it really is. Yeah. Living in New York, I had a gig for six months playing in the Broadway pit for South Pacific. I love that job. It, it was so much fun. And even though it was the exact same show eight times a week, every night had a slightly different, it was just a different experience. Some energy with the crowd was that people would laugh slightly differently at certain things. Something happens when you get a group of people together in a room that's unique to that experience. I will say, for us uh, artistic types, I think we have to be forgiving of ourselves. I have been spending way more time than I would have ever expected playing like super goofy things on my viola. I've realized that it's been a long time since I've practiced my instrument because I wanted to. That's been interesting and not insignificant. <laughs> I think the first one, like, I didn't roll it around. Oh, much. yeah. Yeah, that looks great. I, you know, I remember hearing the piece that we're going to feature in today's episode. Um, what's the title again? Adventure Awaits. Because the day we're hearing the first movement. Can you tell me a little bit about the first movement of this piece? 
I guess I envisioned the piece as the evolution of these two instruments, not of these two people. I wasn't thinking about a, a dramatic musical retelling of the story of Marilyn and, and Trevor. No, they're, they're both amazing musicians and great people. And when I'm able to write for people I know, uh, that's the real gift I'm grateful for. Uh, these two separate entities meeting each other and learning how to work together. Well, I can't wait to hear it. Um, cool. Well, I better, uh, the natives are getting restless here. I better get some food on the table. Right on. Cool, man. Well, hey, thanks for doing this. Thanks for being our first guinea pig. And, um, oh, thanks, man. It's been really fun hanging with like this. Well, this has been Posers in Quarantine Cooking from Home with the fabulous Kenji Bunch. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Stay safe. Thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of our very first episode of Essential Sounds. 
Um, every week, the Oregon Symphony is getting together and celebrating and elevating a different organization, providing support and aid and assistance to our essential frontline workers. This week, we are supporting the essential health care workers. And so at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little donate and information button where you can learn all about the Oregon Nurses Foundation. Now, the Oregon Nurses Foundation is an awesome organization. They're providing essential aid to health care workers. It, it's relieving unimaginable stress off of our nurses who are keeping us safe, keeping us alive, and keeping us going. So please learn about Oregon Nurses Foundation. Please uh, donate if you can, and, uh, and I will leave you with our wonderful concert master, Sarah Kwok, who will be articulating the wonderful curly cues of Baroque with Leclerc. Thank you. 